and welcome everybody here on Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Teemo Swain control. Bringing this deck back because I had a lot of fun playing this deck. It also felt pretty powerful. It's very similar to the Sejuani Teemo decks. If for those y'all that have been uh, playing Sejuani Teemo before, but uh, basically the same kind of PNZ spells for the most part. But instead of um, playing Freljord and Sejuani, we're playing Noxus and Swain. And the all the puff caps that you make with puff cap peddler and you know with Teemo and everything, they really work well with Swain, because the puff caps do count as non-combat damage, so they help level up Swain. And once you have Swain in play, um, you know it says whenever you deal non-combat damage to the enemy nexus, that's drawing a puff cap. So if you have a leveled up Swain in play, they draw a puff cap. Boom, you stun the strongest back row enemy, and you know like that that can really help. Uh, help you win some games and that's kind of what our decks about we're, we're a control deck um, new card in here that we're going to be playing is death lotus this is definitely an underrated card uh, that will just get people nobody will play around it um, you know we're gonna be a control deck where we're gonna be doing uh, a lot of damage trying to to their stuff trying to stay alive trying to stabilize get a leveled up swain and play and get them a whole bunch of puff caps and then also just the amount you know we can do a decent amount of damage just to their nexus you know whether it's like mystic shot or death's hand or static shock or leviathan and um you know so we can just get like some chip chip shot damage in you know we have the elusives with teemo or some works map can make some elusives and the more damage that we make uh, to them then that also makes the puff caps even better because it's more likely that they uh, die from the puff caps so that's our deck uh, let's give it a try. We're gonna go play five games over in ranked. And let's see how we do. Okay, here we go. Alright, playing against Noxus immediately I'm going to do we need to keep death's hand and culling strike maybe not both we'll keep culling strike get rid of death's hand I'm thinking like colon strike take down crimson disciple but then um, you know the uh, the death's hand <clears throat> won't have a ton of things to kill It's a little unfortunate that we're drawing Gotcha on turn one. You know, that's obviously something that we would love to draw. Turn two, turn three. Okay, leveling up Swain. Good deck building. Uh, Well, if I just didn't play Teemo on turn one, I could add Culling Strike for Elise. That would have been nice. You won't suffer long. So we'll have Culling Strike for Elise this turn. Oh, don't draw the puff caps right now. Well, I mean, I guess it's okay, but you know, you want to you want them to have more puff caps if you double up the puff caps. So whenever they draw one now, it's like taking two out of the deck. Or later. Coming in hot. This is where we draw Death Lotus. Come on, Death Lotus. Telling y'all, Death Lotus underrated. Let's go with Arachnoid Century Stunning uh, the Legion Grenadier. And then blocking the 4 3 Overwhelm. That's right, Teemo's never afraid. Oh, 
So they've drawn four puff caps <laughs> already. So instead of me giving them 30, they'll have 22 if... Oh, Death Lotus! You're a little late. Man, I could have had a great turn last turn if I would have had Death Lotus. I just used so many resources that a Death Lotus would have just cleaned up. There's nothing to fear. Man. And honestly, this this could be a bad gotcha. This could be where, like, if they have the the 6-4, I want to have gotcha plus Death Lotus. They are drawing, they are drawing puff caps like crazy. They've drawn an insane amount of puff caps. Man, I definitely wish we would have had that Death Lotus earlier. Still works. Steel works. I'm telling y'all that card's underrated. Don't kill me. All right, so they're both spells because they they started to play this one, then pulled it back. So they have two spells. All right, so that's gonna do two damage to me, right? Just one Legion Grenadier. I think two damage to me. One Legion Grenadier, I think. All right, so they'll have 68 puff caps, and we need him to draw three. That's a good chance. The average is going to be less than three, but more than two, like 2.6 or something like that. Just quick math. Oh, we need them to draw four. Cool, they'll draw four. All right. One and oh. Man, we got really, really fortunate with a lot of stuff that happened that game. That's probably why we won. We're getting some good luck, finally. They drew a lot of puff caps. <laughs> that was a lot of puff caps. What's up, Tizzle? You did miss some good frostbite, but you just got to see a pretty awesome puff cap game there. <laughs> We're playing Uno with that full draw four. <laughs> oh, that's a good line. That's a good line there. Enunciated potato. Shen Lux. Good Lux. Static Shock can pop some barriers. Pop some barriers. Dude, how, how good is that Death Lotus, though? Yeah, we were... Puff crap, puff cap aggro. <laughs> there. No, frostbite mid range is absolutely tier one. Yeah, it it definitely is. If it's not the best deck, it's the second best deck. No. 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 I was gonna kill my Teemo. Uh. Hmm. If I only had one more mana, I could go like Death Hand and Death Lotus and Ravenous Flock. Um. What was my plan anyway? My plan was Death Lotus, the tracker. That's a dumb plan. That would have killed my Teemo anyway. What am I doing? That's a dumb plan.
Yeah, Timo did. Basically trading Death Lotus for Flea Feather Tracker. And I like that now Ravenous Flock can take down a Protégé. And I can save Thermogenic Beam for Shen and Lux and that kind of stuff. A gotcha. Man, am I playing gotcha? This will not take long. Uh, Death Sand plus Flock, or Gotcha plus Flock? What are we doing? Flock. Cast the Death Sand? Could go, yeah, could go double Ravenous, I suppose. Get real Ravenous up in here. Um... Hmm, I don't know. I'll do this one. They probably don't have like that many things that Death's Hand kills. Tilt. That's unfortunate. Dang. Wah, wah. Oh, that's that was a huge bummer. That's you know another six puff caps. Yeah, that's yeah we're a control deck. That puff cap peddler is a big part of our control deck. Um, yeah, could add them. They could add a lot of puff caps. Yeah, Teemo's our win con. Definitely wish I would have used Ravenous Flock, and they're just making fun of my <laughs> using the, the Death's Hand with just having double Shadow Assassin back to back. I am one with the Such a feels bad. Such a feels bad. I don't burn him that slowly. We killed him like turn seven last game. You don't always burn him that slowly, it's just. That went. Like this. Yeah, like this. As good as last game went for us, this game was the opposite. It went horribly for us with that death, just playing that death hand. Static Shock was such a great draw. Into Leviathan, let's go. Turning it around. Call make the 5-4, 5-4. Yes. Oh wait, it's not stun it's not damage. No. I was thinking the yeah, other thing does for it. Alright, still. Where'd 
Where are we at, Swain? Leveled up. Buttercup. Alright, so we know that card right there is the Elite that they had created from the Swiftwing Lancer. Yeah, this game wasn't going well until last turn. Last turn was perfect with Static Shock being a two for a three for one, killing two of their things and drawing us a card, and the card that it draws was Leviathan. Uh, it went last turn went amazing. <laughs> so we're going to uh, some more challengers. Let's get another one of those static shocks. I already used the Death Lotus. Okay, not bad. Never mind, very bad. Uh. I mean, I guess that's just game. Because I can't, I can't block the 13-2 or the 9-9. Right Steel Formation? Nobody plays this card. It's only good against weird random control decks like mine. It's like the only thing that it's that it's good against. a lot. It's my first time in July seeing Bright Steel. At least. It's been a long time since I've seen that card. It is it's great against slow mid-range and control decks. And by can not all control decks, like not like your Ezreal control decks that just combo kill you before Bright Steel formation matters. But like your slow win con control decks. So I I would not put Bright Seal Formation in any deck, and I've, I've talked about that before. Um, I think the, the amount of decks that it's good against is a, is a very slim amount, but there are games, there are, you know, there are games like that that Bright Seal Formation just wins, and those are the games that people always have on their mind, and uh, you know, just romanticize about those kind of games. But it's not a card. Like against Noxus, it's like think about it, against Noxus, way too slow. Against uh, like the Sejuani deck, doesn't really matter. You have your your Frostbite and stuff, and it's still too slow. Against like your Ezreal decks, like I said, like those kind of control decks, not good. Where it's great against is other Demacia decks, and our you know, like, we were kind of behind a little bit there, but um, it's great against Demacia. Like, Demacia Mirrors. That's where it's fantastic. Uh... Do I want all of these cards? Don't know if I want Arachnoid Sentry. I don't think I do. I could see getting rid of the Thermogenic Beam as well. Probably should have. So, it's not necessarily a win more card. That's what people in chat are saying, it's a win more card, and I don't agree with that. It's... Too slow for, like... 60... 5% of your matches and in 35% of the matches it's awesome. I'm kind of making up those numbers, but they're exactly correct. For the homestead. So it's It's not really a win more card cuz there's like the the 35% of matches where it's it's just amazing and and um you're super glad to have it. Glory, courage, excuses for war. 
Yeah, that's probably too high. It's probably more like 75-25. Uh, vengeance? No, I wouldn't say that's comparable to Unyielding Spirit. Unyielding Spirit costs 8 and with spell mana, and you can play it as early as turn 5. Bright Steel Formation costs 9 non-spell mana, making it almost impossible to play. I don't think those two are very comparable. Uh, let's see... Um, I'll, I'll help you out here, just give me just a minute. I'll help you out with the unyielding, or the mid, the frostbite code. I'll get into that. By my hand, the Noxus rise. R -R. I protect this place. Brace yourself. All right, there you go. Okay, stop. Okay, three out of twelve. So six, nine, twelve. That costs nine mana. We have eight, eight mana. Bleh. That's not happening. I'm worried about killing this thing because of Rekindler. But if I don't kill it, then they could have Chronicler of Ruin. I'm glad not Glimpse Beyond. And yeah, I kind of want to just use, use some mana, get some cards out of my hand with Progress Day. What will you have? I did want to do that. Alright, Nakano, take care. Is that worse than playing gotcha? Probably. Is that a bad play not just playing the gotcha instead? Probably. I don't know why I was just focusing on the Sumpworks map. I should have just played the gotcha instead. No, you do not get to choose the champion. So it just draws a, a champion f that's in your deck. You don't get to. You can't draw cards that are not in your deck. So you know, like they can't just draw Callista, right? Like they don't have a Callista. Their only champion is Anivia. So when they play 
in treat to draw a champion there's only one champion available to draw so we do know that they have an anivia in hand i did use way more resources than i needed to with that because i'd even need to mystic shot the o2 because then if this thing would strike them okay but it's not gonna strike them so it's two harsh winds gone Falling strike's not bad. Two Anivias are dead. Obviously they have Rekindlers that can bring them back. Stuff like that, but it's good to have two of those gone. Teemo! Hmm. That puts the eggs into play, too? Wait, the eggs just go away, right? Because that's a round start thing, so they'll just die. Right? Pretty sure. Okay, hopefully we get to hit them. I really hope they don't have the third Harsh Winds. You know, definitely hoping... Cool, get a stun on stun them, don't even need to play the Sunforks map. Please no third Harsh Winds, please no third Harsh Winds. Take all the damage, do it. Third harsh winds. But, uh... Lame. Um, I don't think there are any dog related cards. Yeah, they're playing Zombie and Nivea. Well, gotta hope no more Harrowings. Good. Not another Harrowing. Alright, maybe that was bad playing the other Teemo. I don't know. I wanted to just get more pop caps over there. Um.
Can't play too much into Ruination. Come on. Draw seven puff caps, please. Three. It's not enough. Nothing escapes my watch. Safeguard our homes. How do you want to play team mode and let them cast grass the undying on it? Shouldn't have played Teemo. Hmm. Yeah, I can shoot. So, those are my options. I can shoot Teemo, they stay at four, or I let them gain three life. And I shoot, like, maybe during, maybe this is their only attacker. I could shoot this during their combat. Make them draw another card towards another puff cap. I can, yeah, I can gotcha. I can kill my own Teemo. I think, I think I have to go this route and hope that. Come on, draw a bunch of puff caps. Just one. We got six pop caps in the next two cards. Fight the single fires. Only one. Next one needs five. Darn. I'm definitely, I'm definitely sure that I could have won that game if I would have played that differently early on, like turn, like against that very first Anivia. I wasted a bunch of resources that I really don't think I needed to. I think I wasted way too many resources, especially like that extra Mystic shot that I used on that O2, and you know just like how that all played out. I, I used an extra either one or maybe even two cards that I didn't need to, and it cost me. And then, like, if I, you know, if I just don't do that, then I don't have to, you know, if I have, like, that extra card, I I don't have to play the Swain. I can keep the Leviathan there, except if I had that extra Mystic Shot, let the Leviathan with my two Mystic Shots could have had him dead. Uh, 
You know, like, so I... I definitely regret how how I played that game in the early game. I, I wasted too many cards. That, that should not have been a loss. This is going to be difficult to win... This is going to be difficult to win the Noxus deck. Why do I always draw gotcha turn one? Why do we keep drawing this turn one? No one's the wiser. For hey Stormy. It's going good. I definitely wish I would have played that differently. Yeah, the third harsh wins. Yeah, them... That third harsh wind they had was critical. They had all three. But I still think I could have played through it, but yeah, if they... I'll try anyway. You know, if they just don't have that third harsh wind, they're dead. Like, even... Like, if that harsh wind was Vengeance, we would have won. So I think if I stun Legion Grenadier, then they won't attack at all. Where if I stun the Crimson Disciple, they definitely attack with that thing. And then we'll just finish off the Crimson Disciple with the Ravenous Flock. Yeah, that third one was so bad, getting a leveled up Swain and a leveled up Teemo. If either of those would have hit... That would have been big for me. Hmm. still like a in uniform. It's awkward. It's awkward that I can't, you know, I can't play Peddler and Gotcha. That I'd like to do. That hurts. That hurts a bunch. Would have been great to have that gotcha available as well. By great, I mean we absolutely needed to have gotcha available as well. Sauce Mailman! What's up with the Big Time Raid? Welcome everybody from the sauciest stream around. Ahoy! Hey y'all. Okay, got the second gotcha. Good. We are playing some Teemo. I should still put this thing in front. I guess it doesn't matter if they if they keep if they have transfusion, the game's just over, so it doesn't matter. Overwhelm and everything. We just had... Uh, we've had some really good games with our deck. The first game was pretty crazy. We beat Noxus the first game with them drawing a bunch of puff caps doing it. Uh, we were pretty fortunate with that. Last game was against the Nivea Harrowing. And we had a super close one, but didn't pull it out. Um, 
Okay, so I'm probably going to want to progress day next turn. Right? We're going to have 8 mana. So I could, could progress day. It takes up my whole turn. Do I want to... I think I don't play Peddler. I think I may just keep that extra mana. Just to see what we have. Because I'm probably going to want the three mana afterwards. I don't know. They have the four three. I guess I could play Peddler. All right. So, yeah, like basically with me keeping the three spell mana, I just didn't I didn't have to make that decision right then. OK, cool, because Peddlers can can handle those cards. Um, yeah. Ooh, got zero mana thermogenic beam. How about that? That's a winner. Come on, get another... Have another precious pet. Come on, play another precious pet. Do it. Precious pet. Um, Don't I just attack? Maybe? Nah. That's why I don't attack. Hmm. Oh, connection. There it goes. Okay. So we're going to want to... I want to Ravenous Flock. Let's see. How are we going to do this? So we're going to... This thing is going to get Death's Hand. We're going to Static Shock. Um, one and one. Because see, we're going to pair up Death's Hand and the Ravenous Flock there, and then we can pair up Static Shock and Mystic Shots. Um, I guess we can just do that all during combat. Let's just do that during combat. I'm just gonna do this for now. We can see what they do with the cat of the arm, so we have we have more information. Also, if I if I kill stuff right now, then if these are just more units, then they would just be able to play another unit to um, fix that. So perfect. All right, so we're going to ravenous walk here. Um, static shock there and. There, I suppose. Block here, block here. That's me taking five, six, seven. That's me taking seven. Bleh. Oh no, eight, nine, actually. That's me taking nine. Maybe that's not great. What's, what's our other option? We block here. Static. We go static here and here. And then Mystic here, and I'm taking three, four, five, six. Yuck, I'm still taking six. Um, I should just cast this Mushroom Cloud also while I have the two Peddlers before they're gone. I should just cast the Mushroom Cloud. Best case scenario, I'll go to 14. I should have cast the Mushroom Clouds. Yeah. I don't know why it doesn't show the eye thing. It's kind of weird. Should have cast one of these. Alright, down to four. Yeah, I don't wait. So they should have 46, not 40 puff caps. That's my bad. Yeah, too many plays. Too many plays I was thinking about. And just wanted to click the okay. Let's go, Swain. Is Swain leveled up? 20, 24 out of 12? Get him, Swain. Yeah, we did. I did. I think I did the rest correctly, and we did the rest just fine. But. I certainly wish. 
certainly wish I would have. Um, Finished out that last little bit. All right, so Cat of the Arm and Basilisk Rider both for health. So I'm keeping four damage with the Thermogenic Beam up for those. Um, I don't feel like I need to Sentry. I think that I can wait on Sentry in case they have like Darius. Bleed for okay, stun that. Let me show you what I can do. That seems like something I should probably stun. I don't need to stun that. I'm block. Come on, connection. What's what's going on? It is me. It is me. All right. Well, you are stunned. That last card is. I'm more scared of Crimson Disciple than Cat of the Arm right now. So we should just be stunning Cat of the Arm. It's dead. And now we will play Gotcha here. Gotcha's a better play in case they have something else that's big. Like, obviously I could do Death's Hand, but then if they have something big that Gotcha doesn't kill, the Death's Hand with, with the Swain will stun it. So that's why I wanted to save. I wanted to save the Death's Hand to be able to use as a stun this turn. And that doesn't matter. Still fine. They still take lethal. And there we go. GG's. I mean, they. I don't think it's necessarily a mistake because they have to be really scared. So let's say, let's say they go face with that Noxion fervor and put me down to one. I could like, and let's say my card in hand is nothing. Let's just say they do that. I attack with Swain and the three two. They block the Swain. You know, the three two does three damage to him, and I guess they're at seven, so that puts them down to four. And they have just a ton of puff caps, and I think they're they're just scared of like all those puff caps. Me having a burn spell. They think that if they're going, you know, there's not really any difference between me at one and me at uh, four if they get to like attack with Darius and stuff. Oh, what was your mistake? Oh, Digimon. Oh, you're talking about something else. I thought. Uh, sorry. Okay, just a second. Let me read that. All right, Brom Zed. Uh, this looks all good against Brom Zed. Brom is going to be the biggest problem. I hope they don't draw Brom. I don't mind playing against Zed, but I don't want to see Brom. So please don't have Brom. And thank you. Okay, Hawk, I played you in a, a half hour ago. Name was Gonzi. I, I don't. I don't really look at the names. So I don't know. Okay, you're playing Lucian Misfortune, and you played Ash Sejuani. Okay. Uh, I don't think I don't know of any mistakes that you made in that game. Not not any that I just recall off the top of my head. Do not fear 
the shrouded path. There was like a really aggressive attack, but it was just it was an attack where you had to make it. Um So I don't really I don't necessarily consider that one a mistake. I mean I think I think you just had to make it because like your last card in hand was Relentless Pursuit. Definitely like the calling strike against Braum. If they do have Braum. Please don't have Braum. I'll be very glad if they don't have Braum. Bring me tea to gain the strength of rivers. To gain the strength of rivers? Like Philip Rivers? Pledge yourself to the shadows. Maybe I should have gone sentry block. Ooh, both. This isn't part of the training. Oh, no, Timo. Just a 2-2. Two -two. I'm gonna let it be for now. I wanna see I wanna see what they've been pumping up with this mentor that they just pumped up twice. Hang on, Buzzball. Hey. Yeah, it could be another Zed. Life blade was one. Hmm. Well, they have zero mana, so hopefully Teemo hits them this time. Give him another nine puff caps. Uh, you know, not a good play if they have a big Braum, but that does open up things pretty well for me uh, moving forward. Love the Static Shock with double Ravenous Block. That's pretty nice how Static Shock can do one damage, two different things, and Ravenous Block can do the other damage. But yeah, so we got him down to nine, got him 44 puff caps. And hoping to go from here. So if they have another life steal thing, that's pretty scary. That is a life steal thing. But thankfully, we got static flock. That's what you call that combo, static flock. Just in case they have Fury of the North, holding on to the other one. Elixir of Byron. See, I'm saying, waving it goodbye. Okay, GG's. Victory was the mushrooms we planted along the way. <laughs> the victories are the mushrooms that we planted along the way. So there we go, Teemo Swain Control, three and two, good record. And both those games that I lost, I felt like 
Could have done some different things to win. Well, he's made some mistakes, at least, especially that Anivia one. I think I'm very, I'm pretty confident that I could have won that Anivia game. Um, I kind of think that maybe the two Sumpworks maps should probably just be one and then a second Death Lotus. Death Lotus did look really good. It it uh, certainly helped us out quite a bit. Um, I probably just want one Sumpworks map or or play a second Progress Day. Maybe we want a second progress day in our control deck. Um, getting us all those extra spells. I think I want either a second Death Lotus or a second progress day and just the one Sumpworks map. You know, the Sumpworks map's like pretty cheeky. Put it on your Swain and, you know, it's kind of cool. Um, but I think that's only a one of. I don't think we need two of those. Uh, yeah, this is definitely the best Mushroom deck with Swain. Yeah. I don't really know of any others, but yeah, this definitely is. Um... So yeah, either two prog like because there's a lot of times like where we drew progress day and I was like really happy about it. So probably second progress day, but I could see if if you're playing against a lot of aggro, play two death lotus. If you're playing against a lot of control, play pro two progress day. Like that's basically it. Like progress day good against control, death lotus good good against aggro. So depending on like what you're playing against, um, you know, use that. That's like a, a slot there to, um, you know, it's a flex slot. You know, you want the anti-aggro card, go Death Lotus, anti-control, go progress day. Um, yeah, so that's that's what I'd recommend there with the Teemo Swain control. Definitely, certainly a fun deck to play. I think I could replay, certainly the Anivia deck, and win that, win that game if I would replay it. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty strong deck. And it's always, like, Puffcap Peddler and just Puffcaps in general are just really fun. Also, Swain, pretty fun. Swain with Leviathan, definitely really fun too. So this is just a fun control deck. Um, we talked about like whenever, like whenever we played this deck the last time, which is eight days ago. I talked about this is one of my favorite control decks. It's just it's my kind of control deck that's a lot of fun to play. Um, not necessarily all control decks are, are that fun for me. Everybody's different, um, but this is right up my alley. Okay, uh, so yeah, those of y'all that love control and want like fun control, go here. Um, do I think Swain or Sejuani is better with Teemo? I cur I actually like this version more myself. I I think I like all these Noxus spells and everything like that. I like this. I've I've had more success with this version than Sejuani version. Sejuani version, you can do some super crazy stuff, you know, especially with. Um, uh, Starlet Seer and things like that. You can you can get like you know it does it does some really ridiculous stuff. I like how um, interactive this deck is. All sorts of good removal everywhere. I like how um, the puff caps play with Swain also, and like you're 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 rewarded because there's so much damage in this deck. You're really rewarded more for them drawing the puff caps. Obviously, the other one you can give the Sejuani, but you're not really doing that much direct damage. You have like Mystic Shot, I guess. This this version's a little bit more aggressive. Um. So, and and for those of y'all that play like Swain Ezreal, I honestly like this more than Swain Ezreal. <laughs> that could be me. I never really had that much success with Ezreal, but I actually have more success with this playing Teemo, and you know, because it's this deck, as you can tell, it kind of looks like the Ezreal Swain deck. Um, and I had more success with the Teemo and the Peddler and them drawing the Puff Caps and having that be the, the late game, uh, win condition more than the Ezreal win condition. All right, there we go. That's Teemo Swain Control. Y'all on YouTube, hit that like button over there. Of course, leave those comments as well, but thank you so much for watching and I'll see you for the next video.